All right, welcome back. How clean is your house? You might be surprised to hear just how dirty some places are. And according to a new study from Ann Arbor-based NSF International, the bathroom is not the worst offender. Robert Donofrio, am I saying that right? Yes. You got to nail is, the, uh, is the lead microbiologist and with us today. Microbiologist, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah I think it's, uh, smart guy. <laughs> smart guy. All right. So let's talk. First of all, when we think about things being dirty in the house, we often think about, well, the bathroom's probably mm-hmm. filthy and the laundry room, but yep. where is the, what is the dirtiest room in the house? Well, I get asked all the time as a director of microbiology at uh, NSF, and we're a public health and safety organization, so really focusing on protecting public health is, is our key interest. Sure. So we set out to answer that question. Where is the area in the house that needs to pay the most attention to? And you did a study, it? right? We did a study, okay. and actually we uh, proved some misconceptions wrong. We actually found the kitchen being the area uh, in the house that has the highest number of bacteria, germs, yeast, and mold. Why? Well, you think about the items uh, that are in the kitchen. They don't get much attention or frequency of cleaning as you might have uh, in the bathroom, in the laundry room, as you mentioned. Sure. So, really, the item that we found across the board, we looked at 22 households, 30 different surfaces, and the kitchen sponge or dish rag came up to be the highest. So, uh, so it's on your screen right now. So, mm. the dish, bu- the, the, the sponge and the rag is yep. number one. Yep. The kitchen sink, the actual actual sink is two. And I would think yep. if there's a garbage disposal, it probably makes sure. it worse, yes, right? exactly. Now, the toothbrush holder, that's typically in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, your pet bowl, your coffee maker reservoir. Wait, the coffee maker reservoir is what? Uh, where you actually put the water into in most models. You know, it doesn't get cleaned that often. Uh, there are manufacturers' recommendations for cleaning, but a lot of people that we found in our survey don't adhere to that. All right. Well, listen. I mean, there's some people that are going to have a sponge, uh, you mm-hmm. know, on their on their sink that they've used for, you know, you try to change them out every couple of months, but for the most part, you know, you're you're washing your dishes and stuff. What's the rule then? Well, uh, frequent switch out of your sponges. They're not an expensive item. You know, you think about where they're stored. They're stored in a dark, damp place after cleaning. Don't really get disinfected. Uh, on our website, we actually, uh, nsf.org, we have a link to germs in the house, and it lists uh, the, the five, the top ten places that we have, and key tips on how to disinfect. So for your sponge, microwaving is a very uh, um, useful tool in order to... to but if you're going to microwave order. it, you might as well replace it. Well, I mean, that's can, a lot of yeah. work for a sponge, right? Uh, it doesn't take too long, one to two minutes on high. And, well, and let me such. well, let me ask you a question, then. Take a look at this... Um, this uh, it, you know, I have one of these in the house. You yeah. keep these. It's it's different from the sponge, but you sure. can throw this in the wa- in the washing machine. Yes, yes. Would you recommend these? More That's than actually that? what we use. At, I use that at home. We have a sanitizing cycle, an NSF certified sanitizing cycle for our clothes washer, and that does a great job at knocking down any residual bacteria on that. Um, the other thing that we found in our study is just the. Uh, these areas that we have are high touch areas, so yeah. we really want to emphasize the importance of hand washing. I know it goes back to kindergarten and first grade, but uh, it, there's no other uh, practice that's going to halt the spread of uh, infectious germs more than uh, hand washing. So it's such right, a key. Is this a dog toy? Yes. Is the do- so is the dog toy filthy? Yes, uh, it the is. Ones we found. Yep. These are. If these are all over people's houses. Well, you, you think oh, it, I'm sorry. Oh. Ooh, dog toy. <laughs> okay. So what about the dog toys? I mean, because you obviously, you're, you're going to run that through the dishwasher? What well, you, you can. You can clean that with uh, a mild bleach and make sure you rinse it uh, appropriately. Obviously, you don't want to sicken your pet. But right. the key is you think about kids playing with their dogs, their pets, the pet bowl, going into the kitchen to then eat, which they may have not washed their hands. So it's just a change in education of these, uh, of these areas that are really uh, concerned areas and make sure that they wash their hands before they eat. Out of my own curiosity, what, what did you find most in kitchens? Like, what was it that you actually found that was dangerous? Uh, we, we looked at a group of, uh, of coliform bacteria, the indicators for fecal contamination, and those came up very high in the sponge countertop. Wow. Yeah, so that's, you know, it could come from... I thought from, like, you know, but, you know, you're cooking raw meat and things like that, and yeah. splatters, and yep, you, you, exactly. you wipe, and you just, right? Could be residual from that, could be from the pets themselves, or even from people not washing their hands properly coming from the bathroom. Well, listen, this is not exactly the topic you want to hear in the morning, but it is an important one. And that's good work that you guys did. And for more information, we'll get that up on our website, myfoxdetroit.com. Good seeing you. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll be back.